Hi, Sophia and Amanda. Hello. Hi, my name is Bhavna, and I have had the privilege of being a resident, an artist in residence at Art Produce uh, in the last couple of years. And um, very excited to talk to you guys today. Uh, you are you are the artist in residence right now at Art Produce, and I wanted to talk to you about your projects, but also just get a sense of how you're doing. Um, during this pandemic and, mm -hmm. and if things are going okay for you. Um, would you do a short introduction with your project and, and then we can uh, do more questions? Sure, yes. Uh, I'll let Sophia go first since she got okay, so. face first. All right, uh, well, hello everyone, my name is Sophia. Um, I have been artist in residence here since February, um, kind of made it through the tumultuous time of the pandemic coming to light and everything that's happened. Um, but it's been a really gift to be, a, a big gift to be here and to be in the garden here at Art Produce. So my project worked with the plants and uh, the vegetables in the garden here at Art Produce, as well as different plants in the neighborhood to create natural dyes to dye fabric. Um, and so what I did, you can kind of see behind me and you'll see a little bit later is I dyed um, hundreds of yards of fabric and then I cut the fabric into strips and created layered sculptures that I call Portraits of North Park. Mm -hmm. So each piece is representative of a different plant and a really specific time here in the garden, um, as well as a specific interaction that I had with the plants and like my, um, my time here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of transitioned a little bit now that uh, the portraits cannot engage with the public. I've added a new piece to the project where I'm inviting um, the public from their homes to sign up to receive a piece of the portraits in the mail. So you'll get um, a little swatch of each of the colors that were created here in the garden, a map of the space and where I collected the colors and created the colors, um, and a prompt to encourage you to walk around your neighborhood safely um, if you can to create your own colors or at least see, see the space around you that we um, are kind of sequestered in right now. That's wonderful. I can't wait for my envelope. <laughs> it's coming today. <laughs> How about you, Amanda? Uh, yeah, I uh, started the residency in March. So it's been definitely an interesting transition going from people walking from the street, looking into the window from the main gallery, and then seeing no way at all, or very few people walking by. And it's been definitely, um, uh, appreciative experience having a space like this to be productive and not strictly just stay at home and you know do little things but actually make large paintings that I enjoy doing and that's about the community. Um, something that I was already going to contribute with the project was the plants interacting with each other but also um, noticing plants from my everyday life like either die from overwatering or have infections from things and how that kind of relates to currently <laughs> um, mm. how plants have to adapt to their environments whether it's new environment or things like that and how much that speaks to about people currently and how much that relates to each other so um, the project's titled Hy hyper botanicals based on San Diego's multicultural history so mm. currently I'm creating a 10-foot painting mm on central San Diego's multicultural heritage, representing plants from Ethiopia, Vietnam, Mexico, different parts of Europe, based off of the history and the connections of people throughout history. So I have like a small um, picture of what I'm currently working on. It's still a work in progress. It's on my phone, but um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we can see. Is, yeah. This, big, is this the big painting, Amanda? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the virgin landscape from Point Loma all the way to right. where downtown would have been, and you can, you would have been see, you would be able to see the mountains if the buildings weren't there, and right. the view from Coronado and all these different plants hybridized. So there's still a lot of plants that I still need to add, but uh, it's definitely going to be interesting. So if, you, if you bring the painting home, will you be able to work on it at home? You think? Um, I'm already pretty tight right now with like my three sub paintings, but I still been going to the studio. Okay. Um, but I did bring like, but, um, we'll see 
Yes. Yeah. And just work on it yeah. as much yeah. as I can. Yeah. <laughs> So Sophia, do you want to take us to the garden and, yeah. and show us some of the plants you work with? Okay, yeah. Let me plug you here. All right. Flip you around. This is the cooler room of our produce, which yes, which is where I was working. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and then there's this beautiful space outside. So I made most of my dyes on these tables, um, which was a great way to be able to just really immerse myself. Um, in the landscape in my studio, I don't have this gift of space, yeah. um, but I can kind of give you a little tour here. So, uh, rosemary is one of the dyes that I used. Mm. Um, it, in addition to smelling incredible, it creates a beautiful yellows, um, really warm yellows to dark grays. Um, if you add some iron to modify the color. And there's a lot of rosemary here, so I did pick um, from around the garden. Yeah. And then over here we have lavender, um, which you can use the flower and the whole stem and leaf. Mm. Um, and you can see the bees. I had to share with all the bees here. Yeah. Um, and so that also creates um, a really beautiful yellow if you don't add anything to it. But you can also achieve blues and greens and dark grays if you add iron, which is the color palette that I used yeah. um, with the lavender. Um, a new one I experimented with is fava. You so you had never done that before, Sophia? I hadn't done the fava before, no. Mm. Um, so you can see the fava beans, yeah. um, but I helped, I helped Lynn prune the plants here and use some of just the leaves right. instead of the beans to keep the, the produce on. Um, and it created this really weird inky texture mm. um, that created uh, really warm kind of olive greens on its own. With a little bit of iron, I could get a really dark black too, which was wow. very surprising. Yeah. You can see how happy the lavender is here. And then um, I also used a lot of the citrus. So there's all kinds of citrus trees here. We've got um, kefir limes, mm -hmm. um, lemons, mm. different limes, um, the kumquats. There were also blood oranges and grapefruit that I used. Um, if you just after I eat the, the inside of the citrus, I used the peels oh. um, to create, it's, it's the almost, it's barely yellow, but it's a really beautiful light yellow that mm. also smelled mm. incredible. Mm. Um, so does the fabric then, retain, uh, Sophia, does the fabric retain a, a, like a smell? Uh, it does. It? Yeah, it's not as potent as the dye, but it definitely has an aroma to it, mm. especially when all the dye is together, or all the fabric is together in a room. It has this yeah. um, really nice smell mm. to it that it holds on to. Um, another plant that I used was, this is basil that's gone to flower. And so I used just the flower part. So right. for example, from here up. Um, and I think that was my most exciting color that I discovered here at Art Produce. Yeah. Um, it created from peachy colors without adding anything to really, beautiful spring greens, mm. similar to the leaf color, which is actually really hard to get with natural dyes. Okay. Um, and then it also created some darker greens and blues and yellows. Mm. So it was very exciting in the amount of colors that I could get from, from the basil. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also reached out to some local restaurants. So City Tacos collected all of their um, avocado pits and skins for me. Yeah. And so I used that um, as a kind of neighborhood component, which makes a really beautiful peachy tone. And then um, loquat started blooming. So I used some loquat leaves from the neighborhood right. as well as some oxalis or sour grass, which has been um, really happy after all this rain. So that was just kind of foraged from, from yeah. North Park in general. Yeah. And you've been documenting and, and kind of making notes of, of everything you've yeah. been and, and, yeah, that's, and Amanda, do you tend to do that too? Do you, when you find plants, do you like, take pictures of them or do you uh, like take an actual collection and how do you translate what you find in your neighborhood to your paintings? Yeah, so like usually my process involves about researching the historical factors of the land. So like from Kumeyaay tribes to, you know, um, First, 
and then electricians like during the gold rush and uh, a lot of um, people coming in during the 1960s in San Diego, um, the contemporary environment now. Yeah. So once I figured that out, I, I research different plants from those cultures. So like, um, like the like natural flower of Spain is the red carnation or native plants from China or Japan. Um, and then I have a file, yeah. <laughs> I have a very large file. I was just gonna <laughs> ask you how you do your research. Do you, do you have books that you refer to all the time? Do you, do you use the internet or a bit of everything? Yeah, a bit of everything. So I do have like a Microsoft document of like historically all the big points of significance I want to include, as well as like like read books. Like the um, the main book that I use to influence the environment, like that cloudy environment that I have in this painting, is um, it's called "Under the Perfect Sun: The San Diego Tourists Never See." So mm -hmm. the political environment that and the cultural environment that people don't really talk about in San Diego. And okay. Yeah. Do you yeah. show us your workspace a little bit? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's a little messy. But, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, that's, so there's like one painting. So these sub paintings are for the South Bay section. Yeah. Can you show us the painting a little bit closer, Amanda? Yeah. So it's still a work in progress, yeah. but the Trill Vista Marina, so the, so what it used to look like without all the buildings and there's the mountain in the back as well as some like greeneries and the, all these different plants and stuff as well as um, this one is natural city. So this, this one's kind of like higher up mm. looking down mm. where there used to be on the far left that would be the Tr Sweetwater Channel. Right. Kind of where the 805 and the no, the five and the 54 meet. Okay. And then you can see around here is Point Loma. Yeah. Downtown, as yeah. well as like Coronado and stuff. So I've been trying to look online as well as go to the historical center before all this happened yeah, <laughs> to get yeah. pictures of what everything looked like. Yeah. As well as this other painting. Um, this one is Spring Valley, so it's the San Miguel Mountains. Mm. Um, still need to fill in the plants. Okay. Yeah. So I kind of just work on the background first and make sure it's finalized, and then I add in all the plants that I incorporate. So a lot of native plants, as well as plants for the Philippines, um, from China, Japan, because those cultures had a big influence, um, dark, <laughs> had a big influence in creating like the Sweetwater Reservoir, this the dam, and mm. our agriculture and things like that. Mm. Um, so there's still a lot to do. Yeah. So are you working on all the paintings at one time? Yeah, currently. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. But I kind of been on the back burner with these three. Mm. It's, the big one's taking a lot of time. Yeah. There's a lot of plants I still want to add into yeah. it. Um, but it's been a process for sure. Do you have a question for each other? I will let you take some yeah. time. I, you know, when you're an artist in residence together, you kind of develop a real friendship and you guys use these similar kind of research materials and, and for your for your work and I don't know how much time you got to spend with each other, but um, you know we can we can have some time here to say even talk a little bit. Yeah, I I wish I mean Amanda moved in. I feel like right when everything starting to get unsure and uncertain, and so we unfortunately didn't get too much in person time to connect and share our work. Um, but one question I I had for you just in terms of your experience being an artist in resident at this time, um, was what was one disappointment perhaps, I'm trying to figure out how to deal with the disappointments of this, but also um, what was one positive, like one, one thing that you didn't expect to come out from this um, residency that, that changed? Um, 
yeah, so it's one, one thing that was disappointing perhaps so far and one thing that's been a positive from it. Um, I guess uh, positive, but also it's kind of interesting. So like I work at the museum, the Sandy Museum mm -hmm. in Balboa, and okay. obviously they're closed, but fortunately they still pay us, which is amazing for a company yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. I was very surprised by that. But um, it's nice that I don't have to work yes. <laughs> and focus on painting. So that was an upside because it, it's hard, obviously, being an artist and having to work and make the time to yeah. make these pieces that you want to devote your whole life to. So it's a blessing that we have this time to work, but also it's a struggle that we can't share it. I guess that's the yeah. disappointing thing. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same. Yeah. But well, we just gotta take this opportunity to work and be productive, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess my question for your work, I love how you like drape the fabrics and the the amount of layers and textures are involved in it. What was your influence mm -hmm. to create that silhouette or that structure for your Yeah, fabrics? here I can kind of turn you and show you as I answer. Um, so, I kind of was inspired in graduate school. I was trying to figure out my show and I was dyeing a lot of fabric and I was just um, just kind of pinning fabric to the wall to dry. And I started to really love how simple and effortless it felt to have these colors. Like in itself, the color and the fabric has so much work in it already that just kind of layering it gently felt really, um, really in tune to how I was feeling about the fabric and how it just, has all this color, all this in, um, memory imbued in it, and now it just needs to kind of find a space to hang and to live beside you. Um, I also really love that they're not attached in any way, so they're just, I've kind of bound them since I'm moving out today, but they just hang on a nail, mm. and so I build each piece by layering fabric on top of each other. Mm. Okay, back there you go. <laughs> So it could easily fall, <laughs> it could easily change and transition, mm. um, and it can be used in different ways. So I've actually used the strips of fabric to make more two-dimensional, like wall hanging type pieces. Um, but I'm just really still fascinated with the shape and kind of the weight of it. Mm. And Bhavna, as you were asking with the smell, you can kind of get right up in them and they do have a mm. aroma too. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I call them portrait just because they feel very physical and, and bodily and kind of take on a life of their own in this layered structure. Um, and I just they seem they seem very anthropomorphic. Yeah, like you yeah. have the face and then you have like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they feel like I love feel it. like my friends in here. Yeah, <laughs> so I think it helps to like bring the landscapes and the color to life. Um, Kind of keeping them in that yeah. that form to yeah. have that uh, relationship with them. We have a minute or so, minute or two minutes. Um, I want to ask Sophia about her writing uh, process, mm -hmm. um, if that can be compressed. And yeah. I also want to ask Amanda how she is going to pull these paintings into her larger um, collection of paintings that she's been doing, uh, how she sees that happening. Uh, so if, if, if we can accommodate that, that'd be great. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to. First? Sure. Um, so writing is definitely a big part of my practice. It's something I don't, I don't think about a lot, but sometimes it just feels like I all of a sudden need to write. Um, a lot of my work is process oriented. So I spend a lot of the upfront part of the practice, you know, much more physically demanding, making dye, picking plants, walking, foraging. And then um, a lot of the ideas come kind of on the other side of the process. And so that's where I find writing to be really helpful to help me think through my ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm not much of a sketcher or a drawer. I'm more of a, a word list maker and brainstormer. Um, so rather than having like sketches, I usually have lists of words or things that are kind of um, feeling important um, in terms of words. And I have found writing to be really helpful with this time and figuring out how to digest um, kind of the grief that Amanda and I talked about, how we have all this beautiful work that we've been working on, which is incredible for us to have time to make. But again, it's 
so important as well to share these pieces. So writing has helped me to kind of move past that and see the other important moments of this time. And um, it's something that I don't usually get time to do working a full-time job and trying to make time for the making, but it's been a good reminder to see how important the writing is mm. to, um, to myself and to my work. So. Thank you. Yeah. I, love you. I loved what you wrote. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Amanda, tell us, tell us about your larger project. Uh, I think we kind of skipped that part and tell us how these paintings will become part of your larger you know, collection. Yeah, so this is going to be years in the making. Yeah. So the 10-foot painting I make is a micro-region of San Diego. So the first one I did was of South Bay. And then this one I'm doing is Central San Diego. So then I have like these maps at the residency that kind of shows the whole San Diego region from unincorporated to county and all these different areas. And I'm... Um, I think I'm going to be making about eight large mm. paintings as well as a couple dozen sub paintings because when I do make these large 10 feet paintings it does show you know with the central San Diego, Point Loma, Coronado kind of where um, Hillcrest would be as well as downtown but like if you look for you can't see Mission Valley you can't see you know mm -hmm. other locations so that's what the sub paintings are for to kind of mm. represent those places that I can't really geographically show in the larger painting yeah. as well as kind of like hone in these little areas that have a lot of history and culture represented into them um so it's gonna what i imagine it's gonna be when i have finished this series a really huge hopefully a huge exhibition with eight 10 feet paintings and these dozen 30 by 40 paintings and maybe some installation involved in it but it's going to be a long <laughs> process for sure. Exciting. Yeah, I hope to be there. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both. Thank you. It's been great yeah. to see you both. And um, I'm, I'm excited you're working and, and being, you know, productive and, and getting, you know, getting, uh, these images out and, and ideas out in the world. Um, I want to thank you again for your time and thank hope you. to see you again in flesh yes, soon. I hope so too. <laughs>